In this video, we're gonna be talking about everybody's favorite couple, Jenna Marbles and Julian Salamita. But this is going to be a great video for anybody who struggles with symptoms of ADHD, as well as anybody who might have a loved one who struggles with symptoms of ADHD. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being, or how to help somebody you know who is trying to improve their mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And real quick, you guys, we're getting so close, so close on Instagram to getting to the 10,000 follower goal so I can get the little swipe up feature. Every time I like post to my stories, I'm like, man, this would be so much easier if I could just let people swipe up. So if you haven't followed me yet, go follow me at The Rewired Soul. And a lot of people, like I just posted this picture with my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan. We went to go see that movie, Glass. Ooh, great movie, no spoilers, go watch it. But anyways, a lot of you are like, oh, there she is. She's in a lot of my pictures. Just go scroll through my feed, you'll find them. But anyways, let's talk about Jenna Marbles and Julian Salamita. So after my last video about Jenna Marbles and uh, Julian, um, People were saying like, you'd get more insight uh, to their relationship if you listen to their podcast. So I'm like, okay, so um, Tristan and I, we were helping a friend pack up because they're moving. And on the way back home, I was like, oh, okay, let's listen to this new um, Jenna Marbles podcast with Julian. And um, so we started listening to it and they were like looking up like, uh, like Google's most uh, searched questions about them. And it was funny, They're, those two are hilarious. But anyways, one of the top searched questions for Julian is, does Julian Salamita have ADHD, right? So they started talking about it. And here's that clip. Does Julian Salamita <laughs> have ADHD? Um, not diagnosed per se, but I think I might have a little bit. No. I, a little, like... Um, maybe ADD, but you do not have ADHD. Yeah, maybe ADD. I've actually been told by people who can say that sort of thing that I have not like diagnosable levels of ADD, but I do have like a little bit of it. So the first thing, the first thing that we're gonna talk about is symptoms versus diagnosis, all right? Symptoms versus diagnosis. So uh, about a month ago, I think it was, it, I, I made a video talking about how everybody has borderline personality disorder. And basically what I was talking about is how even if you're not diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, a lot of people can relate to these symptoms. So when we're trying to increase awareness and decrease the stigma when it comes to mental health, it's important to understand that a lot, a lot of people can identify with the symptoms of various forms of mental illness, even if you don't have a diagnosis, all right? For example, for example, you might have a lack of motivation. This is a symptom of depression, but it doesn't mean that you would be diagnosed with depression. So this is the beautiful little DSM, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, which mental health professionals use to diagnose people with mental illnesses. So you have to meet a certain amount of symptoms to be diagnosed with a mental illness. So again, you might have a symptom of depression, but you wouldn't be diagnosed with depression. It's much like physical illness. For example, if you sneeze, that is a symptom of having a cold, but that doesn't mean that you have a cold. Or I get a lot of comments like this one, which could be a symptom of being a dick, but I would never diagnose that person with being a dick. But anyways, let's look at some of the symptoms from the DSM of ADHD, right? So one of them is uh, inattention, and then there's hyperactivity and impulsivity, but under inattention, there's a bunch of different like little categories, like often fails to give close attention to details or makes careless mistakes, or often has difficulty sustaining attention in tasks or play activities, often does not seem uh, to listen when spoken to directly, and there's a whole bunch of them in here, all right? so. Something that um, they brought up, which was, you know, ADHD versus ADD. And this is something that's been kind of changing in the dialogue um, or the naming of ADHD or ADD. So there's some people who don't even use the term ADD anymore, right? But ADD, what they say is like a subtype of ADHD. So ADHD, attention deficit hyperactive 
disorder. This is somebody who's like fidgety and moves around and all that kind of stuff. And then there's ADD, which is just attention deficit, deficit disorder, where most of it is, you know, the, the inability to maintain their attention, right? But again, some mental pro, uh, health professionals don't even use the term ADD anymore. One of the best channels, by the way, on YouTube about ADHD, like I get a lot of people who ask me about managing symptoms of ADHD, go check out the channel, How To ADHD. She is awesome, runs an amazing channel. It's all about ADHD. She is somebody who lives with it and she like brings like different like doctors and things like that and psychiatrists to discuss ADHD and what'll help and she's really fun. Go check her channel out, How To ADHD, right? But anyways, Something that I think is really important to understand about ADHD, and this is something that I learned when doing research about it, is that, you know, a lot of people have this misconception that ADHD means that people cannot, you know, hold their attention or their focus on something, right? So this is why Julian talks about having symptoms of ADHD and him and Jenna Marbles talk about this, right? Because it seems like he's kind of like all over the place and he can't hold his attention on something and, and things like that. Like if you watch their videos where they're like cooking in the kitchen or they're doing something, like you see it, right? But anyway, something that I learned about ADHD, which helped me understand the concept of it a little bit more is ADHD isn't isn't necessarily a lack of attention, it's actually having like a hyper-focused attention, just not on what you should be focusing on, right? So people with ADHD actually have a lot of amazing skills. When they have something that they're interested in, they hyper-focus on it, right? So the problem is, especially when you look at, you know, young people who are in school or whatever, they're just not interested in that subject. So say they're in an English class, right? And they don't really care about English or history or whatever it is, but they're really into science, right? So when they're in a science class, they might be like the perfect child because they are hyper-focused on science because it's something that gets their attention. So something that people with ADHD struggle with is executive functioning, which comes from that prefrontal cortex I keep teaching you all about. So they hyper-focus on something. So typically what happens when they're supposed to be focusing or paying attention on something, it's like they have this itch that they need to scratch, right? So they, they have to do something else. And this is like a feeling that they get and it, it can start to make them very antsy unless they do that thing. So remember, ADHD isn't necessarily a lack of attention attention, it's just hyper-focusing on something that isn't the task at hand. Now, Jenna and Julian just did a video over on Jenna Marble's channel about doing abstract painting. And by the way, this is something that like Tristan loves. She absolutely loves it. Uh, she says it's very calming and relaxing. Like, so I don't know, like if you're into that, like go check it out. Like for me, I'm just sitting there, I'm just like, huh? But everybody has different ways of like calming down, relaxing, whatever it is. So like, if you want to check it out, go check it out. But anyways, Jenna and Julian decided to do it themselves. And they said something very, very interesting, or Julian rather said something very, very interesting when they started making these paintings. I really like all of yours. We can hang yours in the house. Mine are not allowed to be hung in the house. Why would you say that? I don't yours know, because I needed to make them and get them out of my consciousness, but they're, they're I'm all set. You used these paintings as an opportunity to let out your inner out of control. Mm -hmm. I was the exact opposite. Like it honed me down into a normal, well-behaved person while I was painting. Exactly, exactly. So if you are somebody who struggles with symptoms of ADHD or you're diagnosed with ADHD, it's important to find activities like this that calm your mind, right? Again, ADHD, it hyper focuses on something. So do you know what they were doing? Do you know what happened to Julian in that moment right there? He was being mindful, all right? So the definition of mindfulness is paying attention on purpose in the present moment, you know, without judgment, right? So what happens is, is you're like in this zone, okay? And it could be with anything. That's what I'm trying to teach you guys. Like mindfulness meditation isn't necessarily a formal meditation where you sit with your eyes closed, okay? Like this can be anything where you get into that zone and you're just fully attentive on something. So what Julian was talking about was doing this he was fully focused on it and it was calming him down. So my suggestion to all of you is find different activities that help you get in that zone. Like if you're somebody who is like fidgety and sitting down and doing a formal meditation isn't your thing, find something else. Like here's the thing that you need to understand. Many, many, many studies have proven that mindfulness meditation on a, on a regular basis in whatever form you choose 
helps to decrease symptoms of ADHD. This is one of the reasons why it bums me out that so many kids, like doctors just throw medications at them and say, here, take some Adderall, here, take some Ritalin, without trying these other methods first. Now, some doctors do, I'm not saying all doctors, but there are many ways to train the part of the brain that is responsible for concentration. One of my favorite meditation teachers, his name is Shinzen Young, and when he talks about mindfulness meditation, one of the key skills that you develop is concentration power, right? So for example, even a boring meditation, it's not boring for, for me, but when I say it, it sounds boring. Focusing on the breath, all right? Focusing on the breath. And every time you get a thought, you focus back on the breath. Thought, breath, thought, breath, thought, breath, all right? The analogy I give is, I think about my mom. My mom has this gigantic dog named Imani. Huge dog, right? And when I first got sober, I had to walk this dog. And she's huge. And she's like half German Shepherd and half like Black Lab or something like that big dog and she was a puppy back then like I think like a year old anyways I would go to walk her and she would she would lead in front of me and and yank the uh the leash and things like that so when she would do that I would just give it a little tug right and she'd be like whoa right and then I was walking her regularly like every day for a few months and what I started to notice was rather than her leading me she started walking right beside me this is a lot like meditation right you have to train your brain. So when you're doing like, when you're noticing a thought and you bring it back to the anchor, thought, anchor, thought, anchor, the anchor being your breath, what you're doing is you're tugging on that leash. And eventually what's happening is you are training your brain to walk next to you rather than leading in front of you, right? I know right now you're thinking like, dang, Chris, you find some sick analogies. Don't worry, baby. I know, all right? But anyways, anyways, I wanted to use this as an example to show you that anything that you're already like um, able to get in the zone on or pay very close attention to, this is a form of mindfulness meditation, all right? Mindfulness comes in many, many forms. Find the form that works for you and start training your mind, all right? But anyways, if for anybody out there who either A, struggles with symptoms of ADHD, or B, has a loved one who struggles with symptoms of ADHD, let's have a conversation down below about what helps with managing those symptoms, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to sign up for Patreon and get exclusive perks like one-on-ones with me or group calls or exclusive videos or all that stuff, click or tap on that Patreon icon right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.